Welcome, 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 all you lovers of horror, sci-fi, and fantasy. Welcome yet again to another exciting installment of, you guessed it, Fear and Fascination Horror, Sci-Fi, and Fantasy Unleashed, where we delve into those three subject matters. We interview guests from those worlds and find out a little bit more about their craft, whether they be an artist, an author, an actor, could be a musician, anything that deals with those worlds of horror horror, sci-fi, and fantasy. <laughs> Sorry, can't fucking talk today. All right, you can find us on our YouTube channel, which is Get Real Global TV. You can find us on our radio station on Spreaker, which is Get Real Global Radio, KGRL. You can find us on all of our Facebook, uh, Instagram, and uh, Twitter pages. Uh, go check us out. Like I said, Fear and Fascination, or you can also find us under... Um, get Real Global Entertainment, Get Real Global TV, Get Real Global Radio, KGRL, on any of these sites. Or you can also find me, Jennifer DeVoe Muse, your hostess with the mostest. And uh, we have a surprise special guest host. <laughs> this is my daughter, Samantha Bailey. Say hi. 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 <laughs> Uh, well, we're here for another adventure. I'm very excited about the guest today. Uh, we've had a lot of really great guests over the last, I don't know, couple of months uh, since we launched this on June 1st. So I'm very excited about this show and uh, what we do here and who we bring to you guys so that you can learn about these people. We've got a very special guest today. Uh, well, first of all, shout out to uh, the sultry songstress, Amy Bowman. She apologizes that she cannot be here with us this evening. And also, shout out to the Mac Daddy of Metal, Shyler Staver. He'll be on, uh, he'll be jumping on in a little bit um, to talk to our featured guest. And speaking of our featured guest, it's none other than author, artist, podcast host, and many other things. Very <laughs> multifaceted. The Jill of all trades, I guess we're going to call that. Sasha George is with us today. Hi, guys. Thanks for oh. having me on. Oh, you're very welcome. We're excited about to talk to you today. I mean, you're like an award-winning author. You like, you, man, you do it all. Yeah. I tell people, you don't know this woman. This woman does horror. She does sci-fi. She does fantasy. She does children's books. She does like many, many different genres. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to conform to just one. I like them all. Which is awesome. You're, yeah. you, you are what has inspired me. You are one of the biggest people in my life that has inspired me to go into different realms and not just stay in one box. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, I've, and that's one of the things I've always loved about you and our, and our friendship is that I have learned a lot from you and I have been greatly inspired by you and all the things that you do and put out into the world. So like, to me, you're you're you know you're my younger sister. I think. Yay! You're I'll take it. Hi, family. <laughs> <laughs> I like my niece. She's very pretty. <laughs> she is. She is. <laughs> and of course, we love your daughter and <laughs> and Daniel. Yes, they're <laughs> right. <laughs> they're all up there too. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> they grow up. <laughs> yes. They do. I mean, uh, yeah. we've we've known each other since 2017, so yeah. seven years. I've known yeah. you almost as long as my husband. Yeah. <laughs> no, Mom I'm just saying. Like, that's, I that's don't know a, what you're saying. That's I'm a like, really good relationship. That's a compliment, but at the yeah. same time, I'm like, I feel really sad for him, and I'm so. <laughs> 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 Look, if I treasure or value a friendship. I I will stay friends with that person forever. Very true. You know what I'm I mean? Blushing. I'm very I'm fiercely I'm loyal. I am blushing. My cheeks hurt. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say. Well, you, you know, you know, I've I've always told you anything happens with the husband, you know. Well, but I, I was waiting. 
with Sean. But now I got to compete with Sean, and it, it's just, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I just don't think I could win. I just I took, don't think I, I could win. I've waited a long time to be with Sean. So I'm he's, a, he's amazing. I, I, he I follow his stuff online, and he seems very multifaceted himself. He which is. is, I think, the perfect partnership for you. Yes. Him, it, he is yeah. so multifaceted. His mind is consistently working. That's I amazing. Say, yes. And it's nice to have somebody, as long as we don't con, uh, converge, like if he's doing something, I'm not going to merge into that and, and, and be part of that. Does that make sense? Right. Like, yeah, if no, I'm totally. writing a book, I don't want him to come over and say, well, I don't think a character should be doing No, I don't want that. Just right. I want to love you for your music. Just for my stuff. <laughs> I'm right I love you. you. I love you. But there's boundaries. <laughs> yes. No, completely. Because you still yeah. need, even in a partnership, you still need individuality. Yes, exactly. Me and me. Our, we had our first debate on uh, individuality in the artistic world. And uh, sorry, Sean, I'm going to have to. I sent him a picture, <laughs> the, an artistic picture that I did. And I was like, isn't this great? He's like, well, and I was like, no, don't do it. Sir, don't do it, honey, don't do it. He's like, but it looks differently. Proportional. I said, <clears throat> you're looking at it as a technique. I'm looking at it as a style. Picasso has a style, but right. you can't critique it with a, a, a program. You can't mm -hmm. define it. Monet, everything. He's like, yeah. oh, oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. I'm like, oh, I will never send you artwork again. <laughs> Just look at it, say you like it, and walk away. But he is, he's incredible. I, I've never met, he, he, the only thing that we've ever done together in a unit, he wrote the theme song for the House of Blood <gasps> book series. Mm -hmm. Oh my yes, God. He did. Yeah. There's finally he, a theme song to the House of Blood. Well, it's been out there. It's been there I need to go, I need to go, I need to go watch everything. I'm so behind. <laughs> I'm so behind. <laughs> I'm yeah, so he did an amazing job, and I was just wow. like, it has to be very gothic -y, very in depth, and and he. he I still want to make your stuff into movies and TV shows. I'm sorry, like I just, just the House of Blood series alone could be an amazing like movie series or a That's TV why series. I did, that's the way I made it. Oh my god! I made god. it for a series. I did not want it to be the word again to for today is conforming. I didn't want it to conform into a, a film because yeah. if you try to build such a, a large platform mm -hmm. story into a, mm -hmm. a film, you're going to botch right. it like they did. Like they complimented Harry Potter, but they kind of botched it a lot. Okay. I got you. Were left out. So, yeah. I mean, but the house of blood is definitely series and, um awesome so but so is lost and found yeah well, right it's all yeah Harry's base so I well, like we need that. to start working woman we need to get this going i'm just we, yeah. we need to get going my vision with to bring your stuff to life and you just tell me what you want and who you want it to have as actors i, want, it, I want everybody but, to to gain some sort of inner happiness with anything they watch literally okay you know yeah, I've just always wanted to bring it to life. Your your stories are just so like engaging and just. I I've been told that I mesmerizing. Been, I don't yeah, know, I, guess. I I've been told a lot. It it, it depends uh, on the reader. Yeah. I use a lot of analogies and mm -hmm. adjectives, um, old English words, and okay, um, yeah. psychological uh, in depthness that really makes you think. And some people don't want to. Like when my mom was mm -hmm. Sheila's alive, she's like, can you just speak plainly? And I'm like, no, I will never speak plainly. <laughs> That's like telling Shakespeare to stop being poetic. Right. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> right. Well, you, have, you also have to write the dialogue based on the time period that you're writing for. 
Yes, I have to be very, I study a lot um, and I always forewarn people when they read it that a lot of it is not um, truth. So in areas and history perspectives, it is altered to fit my story. Right. Yeah, you yeah. know, you're going to get people of well, that didn't happen. That is not possible. And I go, but it's fictitious and it's right. altered to fit yes. that specific story. Right. Look how right. many movies and books are like that. Right. That have their yeah. own view, even though it didn't technically historically happen a certain way. Like neither did The Walking Dead. But that no. entire damn thing was just created and made into these episodes and other stuff. But you could take anything and do it if you do it the right way. Yes. Truth. Truth. And and, and the possibilities is for any writer or author uh, is the emotion. Right. The storyline right. is great. That, yeah. You know, you can have a storyboard. You can see the characterizations. But mm -hmm. if you can pull off the emotions of any storyline right. uh, that you're writing about, that that's your key. For yeah. me, if I'm going to write like um, Lost and Found, which is mm -hmm. my psychological suspense, mm -hmm. and it's about... Um, a guy who feels he's lost um, a woman he accidentally killed. It was his fiance. He accidentally killed her, but a doppelganger was found in the ocean that looked like her. So he thought he was being forgiven. So he did everything mm -hmm. remotely possible to make her believe this was his past. I had to play music. I had to find really sad music mm -hmm. to put me in that mindset just like okay. an actor does to play that yeah. part. Right. So sometimes like, uh, you know, Sean will text me or something and I'm like, I don't want to answer that call because I'm so emotional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm fine, honey. I hope you're having a good day. <laughs> well, if that's the case, I, I'm scared to know what the hell Stephen King has to do to write one of his fine. I don't know. I would really like that's a scary that. thing like what are you thinking about what kind of mindset do you need to get into to do that but no but i, I completely understand it's like any tv show or movie or or book uh if they don't have some kind of emotion to it people are going to put the book down or or turn off the tv or change the channel or watch a different movie because no, there's nothing engaging you. There's no emotion. Right. There's no feeling. There's no depth. There's no character. There's no, it's just no character development. Like oh, if you don't yeah. have specific pieces in place, it's going to be just boring to people. And then it's not going to pull them in to the right. story. And it's not yeah, going to make I them want them to watch cry. Several times. I yeah. want them to feel fear. I want them to question what they're reading of, wow, I really never thought about it that way. Just right. like the House of Blood. People always come up to me and they're like, oh, you know, I really would like, you know, my daughter. Sorry, Samantha, this not pertain to you, honey. <laughs> but, you know, they're like, I want my kids to read, the, you know, they like vampires. And I'm like, yes. no, 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 no. The, this is um, 18 and up. It's, it's a, a battle. It's a war. It's strategy. And mm -hmm. it divulges into my own experience when I was diagnosed with factor five Leiden. Right. And right. Um, which is a chronic blood clotting. Right. So when I was near death, I really analyzed myself and my life and those who want to mortalize themselves. Mm -hmm. So I had to do a lot of research and the book is so in depth and a lot of cliffhangers and part of my French, but a lot of my fans call me the cliffhanger bitch. Because, you know, <laughs> just leave them hanging and they're like, why? <laughs> but, you know, it, but the book itself is, um, you know, it divulges in my faith. And my mom really struggled when she was alive. We had this huge argument of like, well, you know, you're going to get attacked. You're, you're going to be questioned. I go, well, this isn't about me. It, mm -hmm. It's me 
deciphering how vampires exist. Right. How do they exist? Why do they exist? Right. Right. It just doesn't make sense that, yeah. you know, if, if you watch Dracula, you know, he didn't act out on God himself and be, and mm -hmm. he was punished. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. You know, that kind of makes sense. So yeah. he was immortalized to thirst for his mm -hmm. punishment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. But for me, it's, I thought really hard of, uh, I don't know if you remember the seventh sign. Mm, oh, yes. Love that movie. movie. Love yes. that movie. Yes. Right. Where the last soul in heaven is, mm -hmm. you know, there and she yeah. has to, you know, in her dream, she keeps being asked, will you die for him? Yeah. yeah, and it's right. Her choice. She has her baby, but she gives up her life to fill up the souls again. In right. Heaven. I just okay. I thought that was so beautiful. It is. So that's where in my, the house of blood is the metaphysical plane. Those are the souls who have not passed. Okay. And so it all derives that the house of blood family comes from Mary Magdalene. Oh, and okay. Whole, Got you. It depends on how you look at Mary Magdalene. Right. There's right. two tales. I went for the French lore, which they say that, you know, it was uh, Jesus's wife. <laughs> yes, he, and they had children. Did, yes, right. after he went to heaven and was forgiven, right. and right. that was, you know, and but he lived his mortal life. Mm -hmm. So when he extracted the seven sins, that is the the metaphysical plane spirit mm -hmm. placed in the Bermuda Triangle. That's why mm -hmm. when people pass in it, you can't come back. Right, you're lost. You're a lost right. soul in there. Right. So. He wants to find Mary Magdalene's descendants mm. to have him reincarnated. So it's okay. a strife. And okay. so every vampire or person dies within the Bermuda Triangle comes back as a vampire with that soul. And mm. so to continue to keep the body alive, they have to thirst for blood. Right. It's a very in-depth thing. Yeah. So it's, but you have to really think. And, yeah. And... Um, there is a lot of violence, <laughs> so, but it's cool. And it's got a lot of good ratings and people like it. And mm. they're waiting for book six and that's good. Right. Um, it's coming out. All the books are coming out into one hardcover book, which is great. Yes. Oh, do we have a date on that yet? A uh, Halloween. <laughs> So it talks about um, all the objects, um, the Bermuda Triangle metaphysical plane, um, mm. and all the various characterations, and then the story itself. So it's like uh, the codex of all everything. Oh, I love it. I love it. it. It's great. I've been working on that for a while, and of course, uh, just so much. And then my first sci-fi comes out, uh, Hidden Matters, which Ooh. is good. Yes. And Ooh. that is um, based on uh, uh, travel uh, where people are looking to discover water in space because it's been no longer existent on any other planet. And so oh, damn. Happen. Yeah. So a maelstrom happens in, in space and things happen. <laughs> wow. I'm, so I'm excited. Cool. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. Oh. This is so fascinating. I know I always like all your books, just like because there's so many different, different Variety. themes and genres. And I, man, I, I still look. I, I, how, how well did that damn coffin box sell? Because that thing is amazing. That oh my god, that box. I I, love that box. I sought um, a special effects artist. Well, I don't know if he defines himself, but he does like objects. And I reached out to him and uh, his name is David Pinkle and he's a great designer. Mm, and I is. was just like, listen, I really need the blood codex, which is like the lore aspects of all vampires for the house of blood. And right. can you make it? And I sent him the picture of the book and he created a lot of them and he does good. So it was uh, just, I, I love that box. 
I know. I, I, I have one for you. What did you say? Yeah, I have one for you. <gasps> no. Yes. Oh, my just, God. You got to send me your address so I can send oh, it. Oh, that, that is a definite. But you got to take care of it this time. <laughs> okay, you're right. I did. We moved and it just got fucked up and I got so upset because it was like, it's very, it's very near and dear to my heart. Like, I just loved it so much because it came from you. It was like, a, it's like a personal thing to me. It's like yeah. amazing. And, and the box I just, is amazing. It's beautiful. Well. Yeah, it houses uh, several of the books. So if you open it up, you can put the book series inside it. And so I think I have, I think I have the first three. Yeah. I have to go look. I think I had the first three books, maybe four. I got to go look and see what all I have. Cause I have a, a bunch of them of have um, been actually updated. Oh, really? Yeah. Some of them have been updated because when I first did the series, um, I, <laughs> my son who's autistic used to put his uh, ipad on the back of my neck so i would type like this and i would hear wonder pets all the time in my ear so so if you ever read these novels just know this is all influence of my aggravation with wonder pets <laughs> god bless my son <laughs> people are like man they're vicious i'm like yes i wonder why <laughs> i i always loved how you and dilly and i have so special needs children yes not it's not really this not this one well. not this yeah. one but my but my son <laughs> so nice. i know your son and i know dilly's both her kids did, what, yeah, did your I, I, was your daughter affected also or just the um she has adhd okay i got you yeah i got you so she comes in a hyper. little different form Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So she's, she's very good. She's an artist and I've been working with her on her first book. Oh, that's so, amazing. Yes. Yeah, oh my so gosh. She sends me her stories and she's like, oh. can you read this? And I said, absolutely. Oh, you must be so yeah. proud. Oh my gosh. I am. I am. Oh, I want her goodness. to always be expressive. Yes. We want that definitely. always for our kids. Yes. To find their element and where they want to be. I hate it when yeah. people stifle their children's creativity, stifle oh. their children in such a way that it's malignant mm -hmm. and they become stagnant in life and can't move forward. If you oh, yeah. start the growth, especially emotional growth and artistic growth within your children, it it's really not going to go well. Right. Well, there was a commercial that I really found fascinating and it was this kid, this girl and she was building and a mom came in and she goes, can you please pick that up? You're making a mess. Uh -huh. And then she was at the table and she was uh, looking at spoons and trying to decipher, you know, the leverage of them. And the mother oh, was like, okay. you know, you need to stop doing that. Stop playing with the silverware, da, 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 da. So then the little girl went to school and there was a science fair poster mm. and it said, you know, apply for science. And yeah. so the mom was in her head. You don't do that. Don't do it. So she walked away from it. Oh, so it just so shows sad. that your words, uh, instead of, you know, walking up and going, what are you doing? You know, yeah. what are you trying to make something question yes. what they're thinking and what they're trying to emphasize. And I think that's, where where some people overlook you know and that's where my mm. children's books come into play right. is self-expressionalism and mm. you know being happy with yourself right um, you know there is a book i wrote called i wish i were a kid mm -hmm. and it's about these birds looking down at kids and they're like man i really wish i could be a kid i could have birthday parties and <laughs> da 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 and then this little girl looks to the boy and she's like, hey, what, what, what do you think? He goes, man, I wish I was a bird. I could just fly and have no problem. Right. And it, that's the analogy. You know, right. don't wish to be somebody else because right. somebody's wishing to be you. Right. You a style that they might like. You're an influencer and you just got to right. remember you can do it. Very true. Yeah. Very true. 
I wish I'd had a mom like you. No, I didn't. No. Uh, sure. Yeah. I can still be your mom. <laughs> no, you're way too young for that. Um, <laughs> you're way too young for that. And that, you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't look it, but I am 51. So, yeah. I'm, I'm oh, well, we're the same age. Then I think we're good. We're twinsies. We're twinsies. There you go. Yeah, well, we're family twins. Family is twins, right? We're, we're so, triples. Samantha, what is your question? Yes. I'm very interested. Yes. She's got some really good ones. Go for it. Well, let me have it. <laughs> I have them on my phone, so it's, if I'm looking okay. down, I'm just reading. Uh, <laughs> the first one I had, I put, um, you describe yourself as a multifaceted creative entrepreneur. Can you share how you manage to balance being a producer, author, artist, photographer, podcaster, and interactive media specialist? Um, well, I think it's just like your day. You wake up and you either feel like you want to be that moment of creative writing. Mm -hmm. So I strive when I wake up, if I feel that I'll do four hours of writing. So I get it out of my system, either right. whether it's a paragraph or if it's writing on paper. Um, photography for me is when I'm feeling self uh, depressed. That mm -hmm. is my therapy. Okay. So, and a lot of it derives from uh, feeling abandonment when I was younger, right? Uh, because my parents were divorced, and my mom was very young when she had me, so she couldn't give me that time because she was still developing herself. Right. And so I was always alone. Mm -hmm. So photography is reminding me that I feel uh, expressive, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's. I want to feel like um, in that moment of modeling and or I utilize the pictures for my artwork. So sometimes that jumps into the next one, which is mm. digital art or paintings. Yes. A lot right. of that painting is, um, it, I have to be, because acrylic art is a very, <laughs> developmental thing and you got to really want to clean up your mess <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> You're like, oh, so I got paint everywhere yeah, that's so smelly. <laughs> right and sometimes i feel inspired like people want artwork that correlates with a book and so mm. it's like i get to process it together but mm. it's always in the mood and um right but for past two years, I've been in hiatus and self-discovery. And it's not like a writer's block or anything. It's just sometimes you have to remember you're a human being and not a processing machine. Right. And I get a lot of people who want my attention. And I get mm -hmm. sometimes I get 2,000 to 3,000 emails from yeah, people. Yeah. And they're like, you know, you, you've helped my kid read. You make me feel better to lose weight. Um, so yeah, it's just right. mood. It's really, but I try to fit them all in within the week, all of them. Mm -hmm. Does that help? And, spe and speaking of that, you, you have lost a lot of weight and you look yes. amazing. Thank I, you. Yeah. I see the before pictures, the after pictures, and I'm just like, and I've known you for so long and it just, it's amazing and yeah from maybe me sit, yeah. maybe sit down and think about myself and what i need to do to get right to lose my weight right and, you know what i mean so yeah I, and and nobody can tell you you can yeah. listen to self-help people you can look at pictures and mm -hmm. right. you people you can see those influencers and saying you know this is that and this, this, but mm -hmm. it really is your, you, you have to connect to your fear factor and right. that's fear of losing your life, not being able to breathe, not right. being able to keep up with your daughter. If you guys are doing something, um, it's, it's something you have to really, for me, my fear factor was my blood clotting. Like right. I said, Right. That was the near death situation. The doctor says you're going to die. Right. And I'm like, okay, well, I want to live. Yeah. And so that was, and I was so unable to do anything with mm -hmm. weight and stuff because I have two metal rods holding my spine up. 
Right. I, remember, I had scoliosis, so I can't right. do sit ups. I can't right. do this. So I had to find new ways to uh, exercise for myself. So okay. it is possible. <laughs> right. And you're right. living proof of that. Yeah. It's just you will find your way. We all have that inner uh, survival. Right. You know? We just mind over matter, it. right? Right, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So, now your next question more, yes, what's some more, more wonderful questions? Yeah, I was doing some research yesterday, so uh, and I love you for it. I was trying to look like into the your um talk show Insomnia Hour, mm -hmm. and um. So the question I wrote was, in your last episode, this is from like what I could find. I don't know if you have anything out after this, but in your last episode. Probably after my hiatus. Right. In your last episode of Insomnia Hour, you interviewed Rose Madsen. How did, oh, you, yeah. how did you prepare for this interview and what was your favorite moment? I think what it was is usually I do adults and, uh, you know, musicians and, for her, she was uh, inspiring to become something. And the way she held herself when I talked to her before the show, and um, especially with her manager, and she gave me ideas about her as a, a person and what she's trying to develop and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I think for me to prepare is to understand, you know, she is still young. Mm -hmm. And not to push too much of tough questions for her that would make her think mm -hmm. like she's right there as an adult. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where my preparation was. And um, she kept utilizing, I forgot the word she kept saying, but it was just, it made me laugh. It was just, <laughs> oh God, that's a, I'll have to go back and look, but I think I posted it, but she kept saying it over and over. And I'm like, stop, it's like, 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 don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's any show that I do is kind of like how your mom does, you know, you just read and you uh, research and you kind of develop. Uh, I want everybody to come in like they're feeling hospitable like we're at a table having coffee. I want them to feel relaxed and open up about themselves. And um, and I try not to let my comedian side come out because sometimes I like to <laughs> giggle. <laughs> so, I'll throw a joke in there and they're like, what? And I'm like, nothing, nothing, just keep going. You're fine. <laughs> I guess the joke's just <laughs> really pertinent. To what? what's going on. I guess the jokes just have to be pertinent to what's going on. Yes. <laughs> kind of like, like you know, know, one of the yeah. drum one of the guys was a drummer. And I said, So oh, okay. did you play on your mom's pots and pans real, oh. real loud? Were you annoying? And he's like, What? I go, never mind. No, it's just I'm trying to Well, I mean, come on, when you were kids, like, you know, like I guess this is how you phrase it. Yeah. Like how you phrase the 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 joke, you know what I mean? Right. To like come across to where it's, I don't know, more of an some easy. Some people miss the transition. social cues. Uh, I could, yeah, you they know, do. some people want to be serious. Sometimes, you know, you need that comic relief to, you know, people are <laughs> yes. like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, break it's up a, the, the. Yeah, I'm like, it's not a Carol Burnett moment, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? It's, but yeah, it's, it happens, mm. but it's always just research, definitely right. research and who you're dealing with. Right. When I, when I first met you, I told, I, I tell this to every guest, mm -hmm. don't think of this as an interview. Right. Think of this as a conversation. Yes. Yes. Or just at ease, relax, just be yourself. You know, what would you like to talk about? I kind of let them steer. Like, right. You know, I, I keep it moderated to a point, but yeah. not to the point where it's going to stunt the the experience. Oh, yeah. You can't control it completely. You kind of got to let it flow and you just kind of like find what that person's like. You can kind of gauge just by 
watching them or talking to them for a, a little bit of a time. Yeah. Like kind of what they're like. When, I don't know. That was like when I started the subject press and, you know, Dilly, at, right. you know, my partner at the time, uh, I always put her in front of the camera. Like you mm. do the interviews, you do the interviews. I'll just do the, <laughs> the technical aspect. Right. Because <laughs> in front of the camera, when you're trying to talk to people and in interview, mm. um, it's taken me a lot to, you get uh distracted you right know, sometimes you you're you're trying to think and but yet you see your face and you're like oh my god was i doing this wrong but then i'm losing this and that's why the insomnia show is always in audio mm -hmm. oh, i, I feel you. more comfortable doing voice than i do yeah. in front of the camera everybody's different not yeah. everybody wants i mean I, that's how i started off when you and i were right. first yeah. the first times you were ever on my show we didn't mm -hmm. do video everything no. was completely audio we had nothing like that at that time it, right. it wasn't right. until later on that we started doing the video and, right. and like you said it takes some time to get used to it yeah you really it, do it, it felt very awkward like i i don't like it's just like being on stage at a concert when i go to announce the bands and stuff Right. I I kind of like. You're like, there's so many I people. I, I don't know. Just sometimes you you kind of get nervous. Yeah. And I, I try have to, done that all the time. Yeah. I'm like, how can you play on stage? You you move. You do your guitar, yeah. and you're interactive with the people. How do you not like lose? But they practice. Iron yeah. Rap, you know, practices every yeah uh, every uh, weekend. You know, they just they always practice, practice, right. practice. So, and I'm like, you know, I guess if you just retain that method, you're gonna be okay. You're definitely, yeah. gonna, you know. And Dilly's doing out. Dilly's doing really good for herself. Yeah, you know? she she's, is. She's Very well. uh, empowering herself and mm -hmm. being the speaker that she needs to be, and she's right. doing. Good. I'm very yeah, proud of her. She's doing very good. Yeah, Especially I mean, I haven't people. talked to her in five years, but she is doing, you know, from what I see, because uh, sometimes I'll see uh, people tagged in her posts and stuff. Yeah. And so I see she's doing really good. So she I'm is. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I'm kind of, yeah. I just went, <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, next question. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, so what inspired you to pursue such a diverse range of creative endeavors and how did you get started in each field? Oh, I love your verbiage. <laughs> so magnificent. I know, right? Um, a lot of the diversity that I'm tapping into uh, has to be from my mother. Mm. When my mother was young, she was an idealist. She was a very creative soul, oh, nice. uh, but she was very hindered. Um, yeah. So she couldn't show her true uh, creative form because back then in that lifestyle, it was, you have kids, you become a wife. Yeah, you like have, you graduate from high school, you oh. do secretarial work. It was mm. it was already planned for you. So right. she was a dynamic painter, um, storyteller, singer. She wow. sings, she would sing such beautiful uh, voice that would just lull you and you, right. you would think you were listening to an angel. I mean, she was, and she was um, very intellectual um, she would study numerology, which wow. was fascinating. Yes. And, uh, so she had a lot, but she didn't, uh, finally find her creative voice or being brave to put it out there until she was, um, one year before she passed away. Aww. And I realized that I don't want, I don't want to get to that point where I don't, you're always going to have a critic. No matter yeah, what oh, yeah. you have it, you're going, nobody's going to like it. Just You just no. have to expect that. Nobody's going to like the way you look, not the way you <laughs> talk. But, right. 
And so for me, it's just, I put it out there for me. I put it out there right. because I, it makes me happy. And that's yes, exactly. You know, and, you know, sometimes the work fits other people and that's mm -hmm. where I'm happy. I'm happy right. it inspires you. I'm happy that it makes you feel like your mom, you know, inspired to do something innovative. But right. uh, that's what I tackled it from my mom. She didn't mm -hmm. get a chance to show the world her true, unbelievable talent. And right. I feel I'm, I'm taking charge of her journey. Oh, nice. That's wonderful. Thank you all. Do you have more questions? You want me to do more? Sure. <laughs> this is a random one based on what we just talked about. Okay. If do you think that if your mother wasn't like that and as a like such a creative person that you would still be who you are today? Yes. Mm, good point. Yes. And I think because I've always had an imagination. I was always left alone. Yeah. So I always had to, yeah. unlike today's kids where you have phones, you can play video mm -hmm. games to entertain you. I right. had to always think of something to make me feel like I was part of some grand scheme right. of things. Right. Like uh, we had a hill in the back of our yard and there was this big old tree in the back. And mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, don't laugh at me, but I always wrote letters and I would dig them up and put them in the tree and I would wait for the tree to answer it. It was like the weirdest thing. I was just hoping for something to, to talk to me and make me That's feel awesome. sort of like Narnia. Aww. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like those little things that, um, you know, when you're put in an alone situation, you create your world, you create your characters. Right. And I have stories since I think my first story was when I was um, nine years old. Wow. And uh, yeah, my mom did not like it. She thought it was horrible. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, it was about a horse that got um, loose and tangled and not and did not survive. But oh. the girl learned a lesson by it. But my wow. mom thought it was terrible. She's like, why would you do a story like that? Why, why would you draw it? And I, and I'm like, but it's, it, it was just there. It was right. It was there. in your mind. It was my yeah. mind. It yeah. Came to you. Right. And she was like, well, you should be doing nice pictures. You should draw flowers and you should draw pretty houses. And I'm just like, I, okay. I tried. I tried to fit into that norm. Right. But meanwhile, in her head, she was holding back her own ideas. Right. So I guess right, she was right. trying to protect me from the um, aggravation she was getting because mm. my grandmother was very rough woman. Yeah. Hopefully right. that answers the question. Guess where she came from? Where? Uh, her name, actually her name, because I had a huge imagination as a child also. I was a latchkey kid. I was responsible for my siblings and nieces nice. and, and like a bunch of kids. My mother ran a daycare. I actually ran that thing. Uh, she was always depressed and had, she had me really bad mental health issues like bipolar right. and stuff like that. And that's where that's a lot hard. of us, that's where I get it from. She gets it from. That's where we get it from. My son and all of us is because of my mother and probably her mother. I don't, I don't really know. Uh, where that stems from, but it's like I, I know that feeling of of loneliness yeah. and wanting to belong and being mm -hmm. so I hate to say desperate to belong that you will find friendships anywhere, even if they're not yeah. healthy for you, or relationships with men or women, you know, that might not be healthy for you because your mental acuity is skewed. Like you're not right you don't think the right way because of having to grow up a certain way. And I know right. all about what you're saying with the imagination. Like I, <laughs> I used to write sermons cause I wanted to be a minister when I was 11. I don't think I'm a dork. Okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> don't judge me anyway. So <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I love you. I know. <laughs> so I said, um, 
so I would write sermons and I'd just, I'd put all my stuffed animals on my bed and then I would preach to them like they were my congregation. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And See, um, that I just always had an imagination, like always, even as a kid, I would, I would just make up stories in my head and she, Samantha, then it, I, I developed an alter ego or an alter an alternate world that I would escape to because of being abused by my mother. Gotcha. Mentally, verbally, physically, emotionally abused. You know what I mean? So, and then plus I'm alone and I'm responsible for raising other children and yeah. I'm a kid myself and I had no childhood. So I understand all about that and that need to escape, that need to have that creativity. I used to draw. I used to draw right. pictures like on paper, like Drew. And she gets her artistic stuff from me. Uh, same as my son. He writes songs. He writes lyrics. I write lyrics. I write books. I, I'm working on a book because of you. You know what I mean? Yay. Like, I'm so I, I just... Yeah, but like my alter <laughs> ego's name, my alter ego's name was Samantha Baxter. Oh, there you go. Her name is Samantha Bailey. That gives me a question. I dreamt of a man named Jeff Baxter that I was going to meet and marry someday. And I was going to have, we were going to have a, I, but my name was Samantha Baxter. He, he, he to, her father's name is John Bailey. Jeff Baxter, <laughs> John Bailey. Right. You know, it just it was just weird. It correlated like very it well. Years, like I dreamt of it decades in advance. Kind of a weird thing. You know what I mean? And right. so like she was always my alter ego. And then she became my D and D character when I used to play D and D uh, Dungeons and Dragons campaigns. I did my character's her name was her. Samantha. <laughs> and so I just said, you know what? When if I ever have a daughter, I'm gonna name her Samantha. Nice. And it just kind of does. It just came out that way. <laughs> I don't that's know. Awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Pretty great. Well, now you know how you're born. <laughs> yeah. And she was born to Led Zeppelin. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Go Wait, for it. Do we have time for one more? Yes. Question? Go for it. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, was there any characters or ideas that you created when you were younger that were used in later projects? Yes. Absolutely. Good question. All right. Um, the book that um, I wrote, uh, Lost and Found, mm -hmm. uh, the character Paris mm. um, was one of my role playing. I used to role play yeah. on AOL. Right. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love so, it. <laughs> her name was uh, Paris Delisarian. And. Um, so you'll see Paris in the House of Blood, right? Um, and, and Paris Delisarian, but mm -hmm. then I named in Lost and Found Paris as the primary. So you can tell mm -hmm. I love that character's name very yes. much. Exactly. And it's not because of France or anything. I just right. found it uh, uh, regal. Yeah, it's a regal name, like. You know, uh, Sasha, my parents right. name is Sasha, but it in Russia it also means Alexandria. Mm. So sometimes people call me Alexandria, and mm. some people call me Sasha. So oh, it's just, yeah, interesting. Yeah, people get confused a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Beyonce, Sasha Fierce. It's uh, Alexandria. Ew, Sasha Fierce is the fucking best, man. I'm saying anyway. <laughs> right. Sasha Fierce. So, there, there you go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we still have three minutes. When we do more, I'll just no. keep spitballing. No, you're going. Okay. No. Okay. So, we uh, first of all, um, where can everyone find you? Like your website, social media sites, things like that. Um, if you go to sashageorge.com. You can find me everywhere. That is like the web directory, or you can go mm -hmm. to Google and type in sashageorge.com. Mm -hmm. um, right. But uh, the upcoming book, uh, my autobiography is coming out 
lifetime duality. So that Ooh. should be good for you to read. Oh, um, it'll great. answer more questions, Samantha, that you're, you did really good with the questions. I'm yes. very proud of you. I loved them. Yes. yes. Very good. She does a but, great yeah. job. Yeah, she does. She's going to be a very uh, powerful articulate, and that's good. Encourage yeah. that. Oh, yeah. So buy, oh. buy a thesaurus and a dictionary. That's what I did when I was looking. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, mm -hmm. And an encyclopedia is all that stuff. Hell, yeah. The good yeah, stuff. Yeah, so sometimes I'll be typing, and then I'll flip a word and to a page, and I'll look at the word, and I'm like, okay, that's the word today. That's going to inspire me. Right. Synonyms, oh, antonyms, all those lovely things. Adjectives. Uh, everything. Yes. 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 Use everything to your advantage. Amen. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Well, thank you for having me on your show. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. We want. Okay, so here we go. We want to thank our wonderful featured guest this evening, Sasha George, for being on our show tonight. Fear and fascination, horror, sci-fi, and fantasy unleashed. <laughs> you can catch us. Uh, you can catch us weekly on Saturdays from four to five p.m. Pacific time. That's seventy-eight. PM Eastern time. Uh right. Well, on Get Real Global TV, on Get Real Global Radio KGRL. You can find our radio station on Spreaker. We're also on Spotify, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, uh, Apple Podcasts. You can find us everywhere that podcasts can be watched and or listened to. And go to our YouTube channel, which is Get Real Global TV. You can also find us on our Twitch channel and our TikTok channel, which is Get Real Global TV. So just look us up. <laughs> Get Real Global Entertainment LLC. We're all, trust and believe, we're everywhere. Just type in Get Real uh, Global and you find the shows. <laughs> and also check out our other podcasts, Wicked Entertaining, which is every Friday night from 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, and that's Ooh. also on Rock Rage Radio, Rock Rage Live, Get Real Global TV, and Get Real Global Radio KGRL. And then you can also, we're about to launch two, count them, two more TV slash podcasts. I'm very excited. We're going to have Gagging for More, where that's we interview one. people from the world of drag artistry. Ooh. Drag queens, drag kings. We've got AFAB queens. We've got anything you can think of. Anything and everything. We're going to be talking about that. That's going to be on Saturdays also. And then we're going to have uh, the Venus and Mars show, which is all about the differences between men and women. From a scientific, psychological, a geographical, uh, just all different perspectives. More from a scientific type of thing versus men versus women. I don't like that. I don't want right. to come at, I don't like that. I don't like, it's not men against women. It's like we have to learn to connect, communicate, and work together for a better world. And that's what we need to do. Not this color person and that religion and this whatever Everybody needs to love each other and work together and show respect to one another. And that's our biggest things. The biggest thing, go check out Sasha George right on her website, SashaGeorge.com. And you can find all her wonderful things, her children's books, links to her art, links to all of her books. Go check them out. Go read them. Like, subscribe, follow, and most importantly, share so that the rest of the world can know how wonderful these featured guests and artists are from around the world. Thank you so much, Sasha. It's Thank been a you. wonderful time with you as always. And uh, maybe we'll have you back on for Halloween, huh? Yes, we will. Just like last time. Woo! I know. I was a French maid last time. <laughs> no, yeah. We're going to... This time I'll dress up also. So we'll we'll you make a better. party. I felt, we'll I felt party alone. Together. You left me alone. Okay, this time I will. I will do something. I maybe okay. I'll be Elvira. I don't know. I'm, don't I'm tell me. Before. It's a I surprise. Okay, okay. okay. We'll, we'll be surprised. Yes, it's a surprise okay, gotcha. party. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you, everybody, for watching this show today. Yes, we'll book you for Halloween, as always. And I'm going to be sending you that address. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, all right, to everybody out there and as our wonderful guest, Sasha George, have a wonderful night. Stay Thank safe you. and be good to each other. Uh, all right. <laughs>